Hello friends, the NHL offseason marches on and we are currently waiting for the Winnipeg Jets to decide on a head coaching candidate, uh, maybe Barry Trotz, or if Trotz turns us down, there are a handful of other candidates that it seems like the list is being narrowed down to. We'll talk about some of the top options here, uh, as well as some guys who might be uh, being considered for the longer term in just a little bit on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thank you for choosing to make Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you enjoy what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform of choice, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Megaphone, Odyssey, and YouTube. We've got audio and video versions of this podcast available, so uh, you can take us on the go, watch us at home. We're there for you every day of the week, 24-7. Thank you so much for listening to us, and we really appreciate your support. On tonight's episode, I wanted to give some thoughts on the current head coaching search. Um, From what it sounds like, Barry Trotz might be narrowing down his final destinations, and it doesn't really feel like the links to the Jets are, are quite strong at the moment, so... Uh, obviously, Winnipeg is preparing a number of of backup options, and we'll talk about some of those guys. Uh, many of them are who are, 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 are many of whom are probably familiar names already from the coaching search. And then later in the episode, I wanted to talk about uh, what I would like to see for the lineups, potential lineups next season, and some guys that I want to see the Jets make more use of. Starting off with the head coaching search, though, uh, if it's not going to be Trotz, Winnipeg has already prepared a number of backup options. Um, right now, Scott Arneal. Jim Montgomery, um, and then Rick Tockett are currently being rumored as three of the picks. The fourth option might be Pascal Vincent. Um, and then they said there are one or two other coaches who are currently somewhere on the target list, although it's not clear who they are. My guess is it's probably Claude Julian, at least uh, being one of them. And then Dave Pagnota, who sometimes I'm not so sure about his sources, but uh, we're, we're just going to assume that maybe this is legit this time. It does sound like the Jets are trying to speak to, to Bruce Cassidy which um, for me is an interesting choice. I talked about it on a previous episode that Cassidy would be a, a very decent option, a guy who studied under Claude Julian. Interestingly, I saw some stuff from Sean Ferris, who does a lot of stats tracking and, of course, watches the Bruins pretty closely as a fan of the team himself. He kind of mentioned that uh, Cassidy might be um, a bit of a work in progress for a coach. He kind of hit a wall with the Bruins and in his development, it wasn't really progressing when it came to some of his offensive schemes. Defensively, uh, a smart coach, but maybe offensively a bit behind the times. And he did kind of emphasize that thing about not playing the youth. So I don't know how much of that is really a, a serious concern. Uh, you know, the, the Jets are kind of a team that I think has more youth to draw from. I mean, the Bruins have like Studnika, I guess, Vaka Nainen, um, and a few other guys. Uh, Maybe Trent Frederick. I don't know if Frederick is really playing at the NHL level, but, mm, you know, you look at this team uh, compared to the Bruins and the Jets probably have more, I would say, youth players that they could draw upon. So Cassidy, in my mind, would actually kind of be forced to do so. Uh, When you have the, the, the Bruins veterans, it might not be clear that some of the prospects are actually better than their starting lineup counterparts. But with the Jets, it is extremely obvious. There's like no question that Heinola, Sandberg, um, Perfetti, uh, maybe even Gustafson, all of those guys could easily take on roles over some of the players who are currently slotted in. So um, in that respect, I think Cassidy would probably be a relatively seamless fit. The only thing is, you know, what is his coaching trajectory and development look like? Is he going to improve? Is he going to fall back on the same issues? Uh, where does he go from here? Now, the other candidate that people are kind of interested in is Jim Montgomery. Jim uh, obviously has been working with the Blues for the past couple of seasons, but the reason most people are really excited about him is because he was both a really good coach for the Denver, uh, Denver, I guess, University of Denver, something like that. Uh, The the pioneers out there, they they were a very strong college team. I don't know if they won any titles under him. I feel like they did towards the end. 
Um, but he was, of course, uh, a very gifted manager of that squad. And then he moved to the Dallas Stars. And for about a season and a half, they had a really good record. They were playing fun, exciting hockey. And then he got fired. And of course, the reason that he was fired was because he was actually battling alcohol addiction. And uh, those of you who have you know, had any experience with this or know how devastating it can be, uh, obviously alcohol abuse is a serious problem. And you know, my main concern was just hoping that Jim is okay. It does seem like since going to rehab, things have been going a lot better. So, you know, if he's back on the right track and if he, you know, is is moving on towards a better future, then I would be very uh, interested in this hire. But obviously, you know, you want to make sure that first and foremost, he's going to be in an environment where he can be safe uh, and he can avoid relapsing into any of the same issues he had before. It's a very tough one. Um, and unfortunately, I've seen, you know, cl- you know, firsthand what substance abuse can do to people. And so obviously it's very important that, uh, you know, folks stay clear of it and that, uh, the, you know, Jim is in a healthy, happy spot. Uh, aside from that, you know, the rest of the candidates, Tockett, Arneal, um, not really super interested in that. Uh, Arneal as like an assistant coach is fine with me. That I think is at least planned in the works right now. He might be like a distant option if all else fails for the head coaching role, but I don't think he would be the number one choice. The other guy, uh, Pascal Vincent. I do like Vincent. I think that he could be an option for the Jets, again, if all else fails. Obviously, he has familiarity with the team and a number of the players. He is very comfortable coaching within the Jets system. And so I, I think it wouldn't be super hard to get him back into the fold. The only thing is, you know, what do you, you know, what do you evaluate as his potential uh, in an NHL coach, head coaching position? I think that is not super clear. Um, and some of the stuff that he did with the Moose, it wasn't all perfect, right? So there is room for growth. There is room for improvement. And if he comes to the Jets, let's just hope he's able to figure it out and uh, really adapt to this roster. Of course, so over the next few weeks, we'll keep our eyes and ears on the ground to hear any updates on the coaching situation and if anything changes. Uh, But for now, we're just kind of in a holding pattern and hoping that, you know, Winnipeg makes a decision soon. And I I do feel like Trotz is probably not going to be the guy this time. Now, speaking of the Jets future, I do want to talk about a couple of different positions for the Jets uh, and lineups. I I do want to talk about, you know, next season's grouping, what I think for the forwards and defense, and maybe even talk a little bit about the backup position because the goalie situation is not great. Before we get to that, though, I do want to shout out our wonderful partners at BattleLine.net. They are your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. You can find all of the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship, the NHL Hockey Conference Finals, Major League Baseball, and of of course all the fighting, whether it's MMA or boxing, that you can handle. If you're not into those, no problem. They've also got F1, NASCAR, uh, they've probably even got IndyCar. I know that they have European football. Whatever sport you're into, they, they seemingly cover every single base, even horse racing. Uh, but if you're not into sports, no problem. They've also got Vegas casino games lined up just for you so that there's something uh, for everyone. They really are also your continued source for all of your sporting wagering information from live betting, esports, and so much more. It's a great place to get your news and your daily score. So again, head on over to betonline.net right now to register for a free account and check out all the latest action and trends. Bet online it's where the game starts. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Thank you for choosing to make us your first listen of the day every day. We left, we uh, talked at the the top of the episode talking about, um, you know, the head coaching search and and what we're kind of hoping for uh, to to join the Jets pretty soon. But, you know, in the meantime, obviously, the the roster is kind of in a bit of an off spot. And so I thought I would take a crack at maybe guessing without any acquisitions uh, what next year's lineup might look like. We're going to not really consider too many departures yet. Uh, so this is going to assume that both Shifley and Dubois are back, which, of course, um, that's not really uh, seeming super likely at the moment. But of course, we're not going to we're not going to jump to conclusions yet. Just kind of cross our fingers and hope for the best there. But uh, yeah, so on the forward lines, I think for the first line, I would like to see something like um, maybe Perfetti, Shifley and Ehlers. I think if you want a line that's going to be devastatingly effective on the counter and in offensive possession, you've got Ehlers, who's a masterful transition player. You've got Shifley, who's an elite creator in the slot area. And you've got Perfetti, who's got the vision and distribution and, and frankly, stick handling to make almost any pass or play work. 
I think that this unit would be extremely dominant in possession. And I, I also think that they would just rack up the points. Ehlers has really found his shooting uh, grip recently, and I feel like he's been doing a pretty good job of, of knocking him past goalies. And with Shifley, I think this would be a good way to get Shifley more motivated back into the game and uh, in a better spot offensively, because it's obviously still creating a ton. It's just that, you know, when it comes to finishing and occasionally being held back by slower line mates, you know, you want him to be able to cut loose and kind of move ahead. Uh, with Stastny and Wheeler, like Stastny was doing pretty well, but Wheeler, of course, you know, they're they're both slower skaters at this age. And I think Shifley's game was actively being hindered in that respect. So, you know, that would be a top line unit that I think with this rework would actually be a lot more effective. For the second line, I would go for Connor, Dubois, Zvechnikov. I just think if you have something that you know works, that you know can be a dominant offensive creation machine, don't break it up. Uh, unless there's something that's really changed, keep that unit together, keep it working, because I feel like the alternatives really didn't do much better. Obviously, Svech can technically be improved upon, but in my mind, you know, the Jets need to go back to this mindset of having like three really good lines that you can match up almost against any opponent. I think when you do that and you get away from the notion of like a top six and a bottom six, it gives you more matchup flexibility and gives you the ability to uh, really manage situations and be tactically flexible, which in the past the Jets haven't really been, which kind of then kind of points to the third line. This one I'm a little bit less certain on. Uh, I know that I want Stastny and Wheeler probably playing together. On the left wing, I don't really know who would be the best option here. Uh, there's a chance like maybe Jansen Harkins would be an option. I don't know that it's really that exciting. Um, Harkins is good with skill in certain areas. You definitely can't play him on the fourth line. I don't think that that works particularly well. Um, but in maybe a third line skill role, I could see this potentially working. Um, most likely, you know, Stassny is going to be somewhere on the top two lines. So I would imagine Lowry fills down the middle, but my ideal third line here is probably Stassny Wheeler and, um, somebody on that left wing flank that can offer some finishing talent. Cause like Wheeler can definitely still distribute the puck. Well, uh, Stassny is the same way. Also a pretty gifted shooter. Um, and then, you know, Harkins again, if you, if you put him with skill, he can finish opportunities, but you're just not looking for him to be a primary driver. Now the fourth line, uh, I don't know. This is going to be a strange one. There's a couple of options here. Uh, David Gustafson, of course, is probably going to be somewhere in this bottom six next season. My guess is Stastny's probably not sticking around. So uh, assuming Lowry takes 3C, Gus might be the 4C. Um, and as for the wingers, uh, yeah, you know, I don't really know on this one. Um, there's just not that many players that I think are immediately exciting. We've had, you know, Nate Thompson and a few others recently. Uh, Perfetti, I, I definitely want in the, the top six. I think he'd be wasted playing anywhere below that. As far as the other guys on the fourth line are concerned, though, I, I honestly don't even care. Uh, just as long as like either Lowry or Gustafson are spearheading this unit and getting more than like five minutes a night, I think that that's pretty good value. My guess is the Jets are going to bring in one or two players to fill in spots here, um, just because I can't imagine that there's too many guys on the moose that are ready to graduate and become part of this unit. Maybe they have time for like Morales or something like that, but yeah, eh, it's just kind of a toss up right now. Um, but in a little bit, I, I kind of wanted to take a little bit more of a uh, a deeper dive into the defense because I feel like that's probably one of the biggest questions for the Jets. Assuming that this roster doesn't really see too many departures for the forwards, though, um, that's probably my, I guess, ideal top nine so far. I do think that there are a couple of uh, spots that they need to fill, and I think it would do a capable job, but it's certainly not on the level of like a Colorado or something. Uh, Kadri would change the team considerably if Nazem leaves Colorado, but I don't see that happening. And, you know, Winnipeg trading for a top end player also probably not happening. So, uh, I'm keeping my expectations modest and trying to be as realistic as humanly possible. Now, in just a moment, we're going to take a look at the defense and see what pairings might make the Jets a little bit more formidable. Hello, friends, and welcome back to these closing thoughts on tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Uh, I, I've obviously been talking about the future of, of next season for the Jets. We talked about head coaching changes. We talked about um, some forward rearrangements. I now wanted to focus a little bit of time on the defense because this remains a very big sore spot for the Jets, and I feel like Winnipeg 
has a lot of antiquated ideas about how this blue line should work. Um, this is where I might think and consider some departures based on trades the team could make. Let's talk about the top pairing, because I feel like this is probably the one unit that's not really in question. Uh, Morrissey DeMello has been working brilliantly this year, and I feel like you don't have to split it up. Just like that second line was clicking along and, and doing great stuff. If it ain't broke, you know, don't try and fix it. The only reason that I would say you need to reorder something is if you stack too many high-end players on the same unit, and you can reasonably separate them and help distribute the skill to make it a little bit more balanced. Uh, I don't know that that's really the case here because, you know, I don't think splitting Morrissey from DeMello is actually going to have the impact the Jets would hope. Uh, Morrissey definitely needs DeMello's acumen and kind of clean, safe exit zone stuff, uh, while Morrissey himself is able to be more of like a really great complementary top end D there. So I think that that pairing is fine. The second pairing is kind of where you start to see some changes. I think Heinola Pionk would be a great unit here. Uh, Heinola would be able to kind of cover for some of Pionk's issues. And because they're so aggressive offensively and they keep the puck moving up the ice, I think it worked out very well the last time they played together. Uh, you know, the on ice results were a little bit mixed, obviously, but it's a small sample. And I think the main thing here is that I just want them to maybe cheat a little bit more. Uh, obviously, you know, the Jets defense is not exactly built for a lot of slow in zone defensive uh, coverages and stuff. So, Keep the puck moving, keep it getting uh, up the ice. Both Heinola and Pionk together seem to do that well. If it's not going to be Pionk, I think Heinola Schmidt would also be fine. That unit actually had some pretty decent results in a couple of games. And uh, again, I think just like Heinola Pionk, you keep the puck moving up the ice, you try to get it out of your own end, and just keep offensive pressure as your main form of defense. The third pairing uh, that I think honestly could get more time than it's traditionally been given is going to be Sandberg and. Uh, one of Pionk or Schmidt. I, I don't think either Schmidt or Pionk are headed on the way out. Brendan Dillon might be, though, so I think Dillon I've kind of factored out of the lineup. Sandberg, I think, would easily slide into his his role. And honestly, I would imagine the Jets would probably give him the second-pairing billing over Vili Heinola. But in my ideal world, I feel like the the number two and number three pairings could probably be given close enough to even-ish uh, deployments out there uh, with pretty good results. Sandberg, Pionk, or Sandberg, Schmidt, I'm not sure if that unit would necessarily work. I think Sandberg is very good at keeping play simple, uh, keeping the progression of the ice going, and honestly, offensively, he's pretty gifted. It's just, you know, Pionk took a real step back last year, and Schmidt was kind of hit or miss. So really, you're just looking for optimal uh, options here, given a not great set of circumstances. Uh, it's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be ideal. But this is probably the best that the Jets could do, I would say, without making some major changes. I think those are, you know, Heinola and, and Sandberg are probably the guys most likely to get promoted unless, you know, Kovacevic somehow wows them in camp. But I have to be honest, I don't really know that Kovacevic is an NHLer yet. And uh, Logan Stanley definitely can't start. That's just the, the truth of it. Uh, I appreciate what Stanley's done, but he cannot be in your starting six next season. Um, I'd be curious to know how you feel about that, though. Let me know at HL Living Loco and LO underscore Winnipeg Jets on Twitter. And also, uh, obviously, I wanted to initially use this episode for like some fan feedback, but I think I'm going to push that more towards the weekend, have more folks uh, maybe tracking it online and on Twitter. So I'm going to put out the polls tomorrow to uh, get some feedback about where you feel on the rebuild process or the playoffs. Uh, I think I actually had one person respond already, which is super awesome. Thanks for your feedback and thanks for uh, you know, telling us what you think. But um, for tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time that we have. Uh, again, like I said, next week we'll probably have more playoff coverage and maybe some feedback from y'all on what you want the direction of the team to be. And maybe we'll have some more clarity on the head coaching position. I hope so, because the longer this sits, um, the more nervous I get about it. But, you know, we can only cross our hands and just hope for the best. Thank you for, again so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. While you're at it, be sure to make your second listen, Locked On NHL. Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Here are the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And if you've made it this far, I also wanted to say uh, that I had a huge favor to ask of y'all. Um, I forgot to mention it earlier, but we do have this awesome listener survey. We're always looking to improve our shows. We wanted feedback from uh, listeners and viewers just like you, uh, which you can find at LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey. 
And it's a very quick survey. It will only, only take you a few minutes, um, but this feedback is super valuable. And best of all, if you complete it, you get entered to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. With how expensive concerts and uh, Jets tickets and stuff are these days, obviously having 100 bucks off the tickets and fees is a super awesome thing. And it's just for giving your opinion on something you already listen to every day. So again, thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it. Uh, have a great evening. And as always, go Jets go.